Hello everyone, in this video we're going to start to talk about how to uh, read an input from the general purpose I.O. of the Raspberry Pi uh, in a C program. Uh, in, uh, but first before we get into the program, uh, we just want to talk a little bit about the, the two uh, the ways we're going to read those inputs uh, in this program and talk about the circuit that we're, we need to build to be able to, to create those inputs. Uh, so there's uh, there's lots of different ways to uh, read inputs into a C program. Uh, two two of the most common ways is through what's called polling, and uh, what's called an interrupt. Uh, in polling, the program periodically checks to see if there is an input. And one of the limitations of this is that the input needs to be present when the polling occurs. So if if uh, if it were let's say if the input if we were in a classroom and the input is is somebody raising their hand well if the if the teacher's looking at the chalkboard and not facing the students when the hand goes up if they put their hand back down before the teacher turns around well they're not going to see that the hand was put up and it's the same way with polling uh, if the input isn't there when the program pulls for it, it won't, it won't ever know that it occurred. Uh, an interrupt, on the other hand, um, a real interrupt, and we'll talk about this a little, little bit, uh, there's some variance with the Raspberry Pi from what I've seen, but if a real interrupt in a, in a traditional uh, microprocessor, as soon as the interrupt occurs, the processor stops what it's doing. It takes the instructions that are that it's been working on. It throws them on the stack, and it immediately diverts to a space in memory that stores an interrupt service routine, and it executes those instructions. So whenever that input occurs, it stops right there what it's doing, and it goes and executes some code that's been predetermined. Um, from what I've seen so far. I haven't seen a good example of being able to do that with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, in this demonstration, uh, we're going to use an interrupt in a way that uh, it, it does detect that the input occurred, uh, but it does not execute on that until you actually go check check that. So it's a little bit of a hybrid between polling and a traditional interrupt on a Raspberry Pi. and. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done. I've been I've been trying to, to find a way for a couple months now on and off. If anybody out there has an example of, of a real interrupt on Raspberry Pi, uh, just uh, send me a note and uh, I'd be happy to post a link here on the on my channel. Uh, but in this demonstration, what this uh, what an interrupt is going to do is it's it's going to throw a flag saying that hey this input occurred and then in our program we can just go look to see if if that interrupt occurred and then we can we can take action appropriately and so those are the two different methods and you'll and when we get into demonstrating the program you'll see that there's some limitations of the polling and uh, for something like the push button that we're going to use here uh, the interrupt method is uh, is going to be preferred so let's talk about the circuit a little bit um, uh, first of all, uh, you can see that uh, in a previous video I talked about uh, how the, uh, the the blinking LED circuit and that is in here. You can see I still have that blue LED in here. I've just moved it over a little bit. It's still connected to pin 18 and I have a current limiting resistor down here. Um, if you want to learn about that, go see my video on the uh, blinking and LED uh, on Raspberry Pi. Um, but what I've added to this is a few components. I have two buttons, and what these buttons are going to do is when I push one button, it's going to increase the time between the blinks of the LED, and when I press the other button, it's going to decrease it. So it's going to speed up or slow down how, how fast the LED flashes on and off. Um, and, uh, and so I have... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Basically, I have these connected to pin uh, 19 and to pin uh, 26. And that's 19 and 26 of the processor. It's not the 19 and 26 of the, uh, 
the GPIO. Um, so you can see, and you can see the blue, uh, the green, and the yellow wire connected to these two uh, buttons. Um, and and then on the other side, uh, you can't quite make out these pins here. But on this side, you can see there's a pin here and there's a pin here. When I press the button, this pin and this pin get connected. And there's another two pins over here. This pin and this pin get connected when I push the button. But they are normally open. So when I push this button, this 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 green wire gets connected to here through this this yellow jumper wire to ground. All right. So when I push the button. Pin 19 is going to ground, and when I push this button, pin 26 is going to go to ground. Uh, now, to make this work, uh, we need we need to also have have the uh, something called a pull up, um, and the uh, the, uh, the the Raspberry Pi does have something a, a internal pull up resistor, and we'll enable that in the program. Um, and uh, I have, uh, but, but in, in here that I tried to do this uh, externally with an external pull up only, it didn't work for me. Um, but uh, I kept them in here and it doesn't seem to hurt. Um, and uh, so that's there. So I have a, a pull up resistor. Um, I have, uh, and we'll, we'll have to talk about pull up resistors in, a, in a, another video. But what I also have in here uh, are two capacitors and what the capacitor is in there for is when, when you make a connection like this it's going to have some uh, ripple in the signal it's going to bounce um, and to take out some of that bounce um, we put a, a capacitor in there so uh, I have a capacitor going from uh, to, to, gr uh, to ground from that, that signal and so uh, that'll take out some of the ripple out of the signal and that's about it. Um, uh, one thing, uh, a couple things to mention. Uh, the capacitors I'm using here are electrolytic. Uh, it means they have a uh, polarity. And you can kind of see this right here, but there's a, a stripe on it that has a little negative sign. And that you just need to make sure that goes to ground or it goes to the lower potential um, so that uh, if you get it backwards, uh, these things can pop. Um, and uh, so if you're using an electrolytic capacitor that looks like this, just make sure that you get the polarity right. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, in the next video, we're going to get into the program itself and how to read uh, these two buttons uh, through both a polling method and an interrupt method. So we'll talk again uh, soon. If you like this video, please click like. It motivates me to make other videos just like it. If you want to find out when I post more videos, please subscribe. You can also read about uh, completed projects on our website spastech.net or spastech.com. On our website, we include details of how we did some of the projects that are on these videos and some of the source code that uh, you can use uh, yourself as much as you like. If you want to track progress of projects we have going on step by step, be sure to check out our pages on Twitter and on Facebook.